the mark scheme. Oh my days. <laughs> hey guys, so if you have taken A level biology, I am absolutely positive you will know how frustrating the mark schemes can be. I've said in another video that I will be sharing advice on how you can defeat those fussy mark schemes or how I successfully defeated those. So that video is this one. The most important piece of advice I'm going to tell you is the thing that absolutely everybody lies to you about. Do not make revision resources as you go along. Just do not. Like if you are one of those people that is like, yeah, at GCSE, really on top of things. I come out of my lesson, I make revision resources as I go along after every lesson. That's great at GCSE, A-level biology. No, do not do that. Honestly, if you're doing that, you will fall at the fussy mark schemes, you will. If you disagree with me, then let's take this as an example. So you come out of your lesson, you go straight to the library afterwards because you've got a free and you write up exactly what your teacher's just told you. Right, so then two weeks later, your teacher says, right, we've got a mock exam, here you go, here's a mock. So you revised for your mock using the flashcards that you made straight after your lesson, you learned it word for word, you go into that exam, you're like, hey, yeah, I know that question, I've done that on my flashcard, I'm gonna write it up exactly word for word, how I've learned it, yes, fantastic, come out of the exam feeling amazing, go back to the lesson the next day, your exams have been marked, he puts it on your desk and he goes, you failed. And you're like, how could I possibly have done that? I've been on top of things, I've learned it word for word, that is word for word what you're telling me and now you're telling me that I've got it wrong when I've just done exactly what you've told me. That is not your teacher's fault. That is the fault of the mark schemes. If you didn't know, I have a study gram over on Instagram, which is sky underscore is underscore studying. And I got a message on there the other day, I think, or a comment. And it made me realize how, how confusing this can be when people are saying that the mark schemes are fussy. It's not like it's a four mark question. You put three things that are correct. And then because you don't write the fourth thing, you don't get any marks at all. It's not like you lose marks. If you've got the mark, you've got them. You don't don't really lose them. What we're saying is that like the question in the exam could be like name some aspects of factory farming. So you'd say about like restricting movement. There could be like eight different answers in the textbook and you've learned them all and then there is space for two. So you choose two, you put those two down and then the mark scheme doesn't have those two on. The mark scheme has a different three because it gives you sort of a range but the mark scheme will only have three on and neither of your two are on it. So even though you've learned all eight you would actually have to put all eight down to try and get the two marks, which then obviously means you're wasting time as well. You're not gonna lose the marks, but it's that there are eight possible answers and the mark scheme only wants you to give two and you don't know what two they want because they've given you eight. It's like a bit of a guess of which one do they want. Or another example is that you have a four mark question on hemoglobin, so you're explaining hemoglobin. Honestly, this content I'm saying off the top of my head might not be correct because I haven't learned this in ages. So there's like four oxygen binding groups, forms octahemoglobin, because it's four marks, there's going to be like four specific words that are on the marks. So you need to include all those four specific words to hit the marks. It's not really about your explanation. It's that there are 10 keywords and you're trying to include them all and only four of them are going to get you the marks and you don't know what four they are. That's what it means. So it doesn't matter if it's two mark question or a six mark question. It's, that's the sort of fussiness it means. It's a specific one and yet you've got 10 to choose from that's how it's fussy. So to try and get all of the marks, you need to try and hit everything, which means you need to cover everything. So if you're taking exactly what your teacher says and you're learning that word for word, you're not gonna get all the marks because your teacher hasn't told you everything. There's one specific question that was on my mock in March. So it was the one that was previous to us. It was the one that the previous year to us had actually sat there as their real exam. And our teacher was absolutely fuming over it. Because yeah, I think it was a question about hemoglobin. And literally all the textbook says is that I in, is part of hemoglobin, but it doesn't say that that's the actual sort of binding site, if that makes sense. It doesn't say that the oxygen actually binds to that. It doesn't say that in the spec either. It just says that iron is part of it. So everybody went into that exam and pretty much nobody got the marks because the mark scheme decided that it wanted you to know that without ever telling us that. So that's also how it can be a bit funny. But again, like nobody's gonna know that because it's not in the textbook, it's not in the spec, and you, so nobody's going to know that, it doesn't matter. So, to overcome that, you need to get a good, well-rounded knowledge of everything that's on the spec. So you need to collect every possible answer and put it all together and then learn that, not just learning what your teacher says. So you need to take the information from the lessons, you need to take information from every textbook you can possibly find, as well as websites, revision resources, everything else you can find anywhere. Say we had a lesson, my routine. So we had a biology lesson and we've just finished this topic, right? So because we finished this topic, our teacher gives us um, some past paper questions as a homework. It's here, here's some past paper questions to hand this in next week and I'll mark it for you. Like, 
great, okay. I go home, get my folder out with all the lessons content in. I also get out my AQA textbook, because I was with AQA, as well as my CGP revision guide. I put them all on the desk, all on the same topic page, so I can see it all at once. And then I start going through the past paper question. So I look at the question, I think about what I would think the answer was, so I check that against the textbook, the revision guide, and the lesson. And then I would look at the mark scheme online, and I'd see how well does that relate? Is there anything specific on the mark scheme that's missing from my notes? So I'd write the answer from the mark scheme onto the homework and then if there was something missing or something that was explained a bit better on the mark scheme, I'd write that onto the lessons notes. Once I'd finished all of that, I would then add extra information from the textbook and the revision guide also into the lessons notes. And possibly if it was like a lot, go on the computer, compile it all to one and print off a full new page of notes. This is gonna make your folder a lot wider and it's gonna make it harder to learn because there's more information obviously, but it's also gonna give you a better chance of actually hitting the marks. If it was something in particular that I knew was on the old spec because there aren't really that many revision resources out there now, I would watch a Mr. Pollock video. If he mentions something specific that's not mentioned on anything, again, I'll write that down. Get all of those resources, compiling it to one answer and then learning the answer word for word so you get every single aspect in. But obviously you do need to wait until you finish the whole topic because I was right, I was going home, wanting to be productive, so I was starting writing up information from the textbook. I was like, oh, he's not mentioned that, I'll add that in. Oh, he's not mentioned that either, I'll add that in. Into my lesson's notes, compiling it to one, learning it, and then going back to the lesson the next day, and he's like, okay, let's start this next similar aspect now. And that just so happens to be everything I've just done the night before, which meant it was a waste of time. You need to wait until you finish the whole topic. So once you have compiled it to one, then you can be productive, make your flashcards, post-it notes, mind maps, do all of that. Make sure you learn it word for word, best as you can. Try and learn absolutely everything you've covered, but obviously it needs to be from all the sources. And by doing that, you will start to realise how things sort of branch and link together, which then gives you an advantage when you start your year 13 essays. Yes, yeah, some people would also say that doing homeworks with the mark scheme is bad, but I personally found that the most helpful. It also saved me the most time, because obviously you don't have a lot of time when you're doing your A-levels. And by using the mark scheme, it got me more into the mindset of the examiner. So I, when I went into a mock or an exam, I was thinking in the mindset of an examiner. So I knew immediately what sort of thing they'd be looking for, which made it a lot easier to get the marks. There you go, guys. I really do hope that helps you. And I wish you the very best of luck. Bye.